So we are discussing the chapter making of a scientist and uh, let us just quickly revise what we have read. This uh, story is about uh, Richard E. Bright. He has a very ordinary childhood, but yes, there was something very extraordinary about it also. And uh, what was it that in his childhood he got many opportunities to learn and uh, his mother kept him busy throughout uh, the day and uh, she would uh, provide him with uh, you know, things to learn and make him, you know, not uh, spend his time just wasting it, but using it productively. And as a result, yes, uh, he got in this habit of uh, collecting things about studying about things. And the first thing that he did collect was, he collected the different butterflies that were available in his area. Then what did he do? Yes. So when he, you know, like his mother got a book for him, seeing that how interested he is about collecting butterflies, that was the travels of Monarch X. And uh, at the end of the book, their professor Urquhart, so Dr. Urquhart, had, uh, you know, asked uh, the people there to tag the butterfly, the Monarch butterfly, and to study about its uh, migration pattern. So Ibra did that, yes, uh, but uh, he was not very involved in that because uh, he found uh, that uh, even though he had made his basement a place for, uh, you know, what you can say, the growing or taking care of or keeping butterflies, but he did not get an adequate response. He was a little disappointed in that. Yes, so he did tag the butterflies, but not many came back and those who did come back uh, or he was able to get to the tag or something, it was not very far away. So that was it about the migration pattern. Then he got an opportunity to participate in science fair. He did participate, but what was his display? That was, yes, what did he do? What did he do in this uh, science fair he participated in? What was his exhibit? Come on, tell me students. What did he do? So he, yeah, frog tissues. Don't put a question mark. Tell me, you're, you're, you're not asking me. You can't, I'm asking you the question. Yes, so he had, yes, I should be correct. Uh, Nish also correct. So he, they ha he had displayed a slide of frog tissues, but according to the judges, that was not science. Right? It was not, a, you know, like there's something so scientific. He was disappointed because everybody around him won a prize. He was the one who did not. And see with him, right? He did not lose heart. In fact, he once again wrote to Dr. Quart and he got a long list of projects that he could do. And he told him that these are the things that he could do. He started by, you know, like uh, that why uh, these, uh, you know, like uh, monarch uh, pupas or butterflies, they are killed. And he thought uh, that maybe there's some other insect responsible for it. So he grew them up with beetles. Nothing happened. That was science. He started getting prizes. He started about that. Yes, he did the study about how the viceroy butterfly, because the viceroy butterfly was a favorite of the birds. The birds used to, you know, feed these uh, but on these butterflies. So what did he? Uh, they do. They change themselves, you know, they had uh, this, like, they changed their pattern, similar to the monarch butterfly, so that they could save themselves to becoming a prey of the birds, right? So because uh, the monarchs are not tasty to eat, maybe that is why the birds, they prefer the viceroy butterfly. Second thing he did, yes, it was a prize winning attempt. Then about the pupa of the monarch butterfly. What did you find out about the pupa of the monarch butterfly? Tell me. Quickly, quickly, come on, hurry up. Yes, if we are learned, if we are in the class, we have to be attentive. What did you find out? We did find out something, ma'am. You know, what did you find out? Yeah, come on, look at your books. I don't mind. Look at your books. Find out. Yes, very good. And uh, I, I think so. A big clap for Nishta. She's always there responding, irrespective of here, right? So she is one student who's very, very regular in her response. Well done, Nishta. So what was it? Now, the spots on the pupa, they are not ornamental. What does ornamental mean? Decorative. Yes. 
Jasmine, very nice. Well done, Jasmine. Also, good girl. So these uh, spots on the pupa, they were not ornamental. What does ornamental mean? Decoration. Decoration. Yes, it was. They were not for decoration. There was a purpose for these spots. These spots they secreted hormones, right? And so if right found out one thing very very important, that is the spots they secreted growth hormones. And then because his entries were so what uh, yes science scientific he was doing a lot of studies he was doing a lot of uh, you know like uh, information he was getting he's coming to conclusion he's they're doing a lot of research and that is what science is about isn't it so yes he got prizes and because of the prizes he was winning what was happening the opportunities were really bright for because of the prizes he got what were the opportunities that were there before him yes He's working so hard and it's not that, uh, yes, uh, maybe yeah, he might be getting the prizes there, your certificates and things like that, uh, right in kind. But because of these uh, prize winning entries, he got the opportunity to, yes, very good Harshit, he got the opportunity to work in very well equipped laboratory so it was the army laboratory where it was a agricultural laboratory and they were very well equipped with very sophisticated instruments right so he got a chance to work over there it's a good opportunity and so it was so what was there making him a scientist was it that one day he realized i want to become a scientist no was it his environment yes right the opportunities he got yes did he take advantages of those opportunities definitely right so one by one so many things happened you know that this is how the scientist was made so there is no formula here you take this and that you put it together a scientist one yeah no there are many ways in which one can become a scientist isn't it right so yes yeah. so then he found out that what is the growth hormone really so because when we read this chapter, what was one very extraordinary achievement of Richard E. Bright? That his article, along with his friend, you know, in his article it got published in a reputed science journal, in which, yes, uh, these young scientists hardly got a chance, but his article was there along with so many great minds and uh, so great recognition for him. And that is how the story began, isn't it? So he found out about the cell theory, about the basis of life. He found out that the DNA is there and it decides what, it, you know, like, yes, the form and the function of the cells. How interesting. It also determines our, what, our genetic degree. So the DNA, very important part, and right was their responsibility. When you think about it, it is not a small achievement. So, can you share the screen and let us continue with the chapter? Is the screen visible? So, with all this going on with his you know, participation in science affairs and the competitions and all, did it affect his studies? No, it did not affect his studies. He was second in his class. So, see, he's such a bright, brilliant student. Now, let's continue with the reading. Yes, second paragraph we're doing. All of you look at the screen. Can you see the screen? Give me a yes or no. If the theory is correct, it will be a big step towards understanding the processes of life. It might also lead to new ideas for preventing some types of cancer and other diseases. So that this is a, a, what a breakthrough achievement. All of this is possible because of E. Bright's scientific curiosity. So this is one quality about him. And so something ordinary, right? We, we never find, think about it. What, what is there about butterflies? Why should we study about them? Let me something study exotic. Okay? But these are things which are around us. And yet maybe they are also guided by the same scientific principle that we are. The DNA is there, controlling everything. His high school research into the purpose of the spots on a monarch pupa eventually led him to his theory about cell life. About his school, 
even in high school. Now he joined Harvard also. He's gone to medical college. So he's carrying on with his sister. Right? At a young age, he began, and by the age of 22, he was ranking among the, the top scientists. Richard E. Bright has been interested in science since he first began collecting butterflies. He didn't know that what he's doing. For him, it was just not something that his mother had done to keep him busy. Right? But not so deeply that it hasn't time for other interests. So, what do you think about scientists? That they're always busy with the test tubes and calculations, sitting in the laboratories, and the, but no, this person he has so many other interests also. He bright also became a champion debater and public speaker and a good communist and all-round outdoor person. He's also an expert photographer, particularly of nature and scientific. So nature interests him, isn't it right? So he started with the butterflies and with other exhibits. So he's not a boring, uh, you know, scientist there, always locked up in his laboratory. He manages to keep himself quite active. There are other hobbies that he has. In high school, Richard E. Bright was a straight A student. We weren't expecting anything less. Because learning was easy, he turned a lot of his energy towards the debating and model United Nations Club. So because he thought he was very good in studies as it is, so he did not have to put in so much of effort. So he devoted his time and energy to other things in the debating club as a speaker. And he was also of M-U-N, you must have heard of it, right? So many schools there, nine years, right? He was also the M M model. He also found someone to admire, Richard A. Weather, the social studies teacher and advisor to both clubs. Right? So he was there. Uh, like any other student, yes, and he had his favorite teacher, the social studies uh, teacher, right? I, I think so. You also have a favorite social studies teacher and advisor to both clubs. Mr. Wehrer was the perfect person for me then. He opened my mind to new ideas. So he must have motivated him that, yeah, you're there participating in science uh, projects, in science exhibitions. You should uh, you know, indulge in other activities. So he got this. Give that extra because he was the person who put in three or four hours of life to try to make all his research with butterflies and other things. We don't utilize it in a good way. And look at him, he's there doing his science research. He's finding about his debates also, taking part in sports. This is what we're supposed to do. Not always to us clean uh, always. You know, to get out and uh, play. That is very, very important. Develop other interests also. Good one. Something which are going to be productive. Not uh, something that is going to, you know, cause disturbances. Richard was competitive, as to where that continues, but not in a bad way. Some people are there, oh God, by hook or by crook, I have to be first. They might cheat, they might lie, they might hurt someone in the process. But no, he was a good student and he was a very honest competitor. He explained, Richard wasn't interested in winning for winning sake or winning to get a prize. So yes, he was second there among so many students. Rather, he was willing because he wanted to do the best job he could, and that is the right spirit. You want to win, and you want you want to put in your best. That is why you think you deserve to. Not because I want to be better than that person, or I want to prove something, or teach him a lesson, or I want to hurt someone. It's not that way. For the right reasons, he wants to be the best, and that is one of the ingredients in the making of a scientist. Start with a first rate mind, add curiosity, and mix in the will to win for the right reason. So these are the ingredients. Kesi scientist. 
so so there's a the quality there is no recipe for making a good science scientist sorry there is no method here which you can become a good scientist but yes some of them a first rate mind a mind that is very curious eager right add curiosity mix in the will to win yeah you should have a desire winning is that i will not give up determination ye bar mistakes bhi hoin ge ye bar losses bhi honge you find out that uh, everything was wrong right you have to start up again that is where scientists they never give up if right has this quality from the time the book the charles of monarch x open the world of science to him mr bright has never lost his scientific curiosity and we don't want him to okay yes and he's given us such an important discovery and uh, yes so with this we have come to the end of the chapter it was so difficult was it right i thought it would be so many facts in him but it is quite interesting yes do you agree how many agree okay let's start can i go to the questions can i go to the questions can you hear me now should i hold the mic in my hand no how can one become a scientist an economist a historian is there a different path you need to follow is science is here and economist is there and historian is there is it like that they are all the same is it does it simply involve reading many books on the subject does it involve observing thinking doing experiments is it right so you read so many books you become a scientist you read a lot of books you become an economist or historian is it no so once again you want to become an expert you want to have information you want to be there you know understanding why this happens so you have to make a lot of efforts right so it is there you know it is not only if you are studying zoology or botany you're going to be a scientist it is any subject that you take up you are curious about it you want to gain expertise you want to learn about it so right it is not only that theek hai i i read all these books i gave the exam i got my result oh i'm a historian no find you have to find out so much and history yes it is there in the past we might not have so many facts and all so a lot of research so many things here economy how how do things around us work right so what is it about the market about money about so many things isn't it right so try to understand this why, why did the situation happen right so why when does the market uh, you know like boom or when does it uh, fall and all, all these things if you are a students of economics you might know right scientist scientist as we know richard e bright here is a perfect example you can't read so many books and then okay i'm a scientist you've not done any kind of experiment you've not tried to find out things for yourself how do you think you will be a scientist now you must have read about cells and uh, dna in your science books discuss richard e bright's work in the light of what you have studied what have you read about dna yes what have you read about dna rna all these things we're talking about mutations nowadays or oh, right isn't it we don't want cloning so many things here we're talking about so what is it here what have you learned about dna have you done dna in your sciences yes have you done it and what have you learned about it you've done it yes and we have learned about dna how all right have you done the structure of it not maybe in so much of details okay fine now if you get an opportunity to work like richard e bright on projects and experiments which field would you like to work on and why so nowadays you know people are there like of course with working on uh, 
I have not studied much about DNA. Okay, you will because uh, that is a very important part of your, uh, you know, like uh, sciences, your biology. Now, yes, what was I uh, saying that if you got an opportunity, nowadays when we look around us, how much things have changed. It's because the scientists have been working or our experts have been working, right? So we have their people doing their research whether it is in the field of medicine, whether it's in the field of technology, computers, everywhere this research goes on. And that is why we're able to get the best here. So we are here interacting. This is one application, isn't it? Right? So wherever you, there is a, a way or a will, right? So yeah, so the means are found, isn't it? Yes, if you had to work, what would you work on? Any project or experiment you'd like to work on? So children uh, everywhere wonder about the world around them. They are asking questions when you ask. So what is DNA fingerprinting? What are its uses? Can you find out? How do honeybees identify their own honeycombs? Why does rain fall in drops? Have you got the answer to any of these questions? So you have, uh, right? So there is at the end of the book, you can find out. And uh, yes, you are there. So there are, aren't many, you know, enough uh, questions uh, here from this.